Okay, let's launch Micromate. Okay, I think this will work nicely. And now I got to go into OBS. OBS, where are you? Here you are. All right. And I'm just going to have to wait for the stream to settle until I see it on my other monitor. Oh boy. Outro. Let's go to intro. Buried treasures. Taipan book. Can I edit this? Mm -hmm. Edit. Taipan book. Type in by the book. Where's that? I have to go to Twitch. Oh, so I have to log into this one here in order to chat. That sucks. back. Authy. Authy token. Twitchy. Submit. Remember this computer. I don't want to remember that computer. Okay. I'm in my account and I can go to my channel and chat from this computer. I hope so. That's cool. All right, are we ready to OBS this thing? OBS, exclusive. Live stream is what? No, it's not gonna be a video. Remove it. I want live camera. Add uh, display capture, yeah. Display capture three, fine. The infinite regress. Okay, I'm gonna start streaming. Go to intro. Let's start streaming, see what happens. Okay, I'm waiting for the stream to settle. And I can minimize OBS, I guess. Yep. Minimize I get... OBS, I guess. Okay. Um, Minimize get... OBS, I guess. Okay, I'm going to be hearing okay. an echo on the other computer, so let me plug in headphones. Okay, I'm going to be hearing. Okay. Buried Treasures Type Handbook. Why isn't it showing the full screen? Display capture. Minimize. Okay, OBS, what's going on? Let's just go to live stream. Okay. Are we live streaming? Yay, infinite regress. Okay, how do I stop looking at all this? <laughs> okay, we're moving it down. Did I move it down? Yay. All right, let's launch Micromate. Here's Micromate. Let's see how that looks on the stream. Yay. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, well. Um, I'm filling in for now. Uh, Lady Alaros is taking a, day, a night off tonight. So let me show you what I want to do. I want to read the Taipan book, the Bon book, while I'm in Micromate. So can I layer these? So, okay. So let's uh, take a look at the book. Okay. May I see the delay until it streams out? Okay, and you're seeing my stupid Zoom panel. Hide floating meeting controls. Okay. Good. All right, I don't do much live streaming, so I'm practicing here. Uh, Taipan, the Daibon by 
Art Canfield, Jim McClenahan, and Carl Albrecht, who must have worked hundreds of hours to make this thing happen. Now for PDFs, I like to view them in a continuous scroll. Okay, so it's bigger. Yep. And then it starts with a basic dedication. So you have to type in this program to see it. And then there's some little bugs in it too. And uh, I figured out the bugs and fixed it. And then I'm in the process of creating a disk. So um, it'll have a menu like this. And then you run one to see the dedication program. And then you could list it. Did I press enter? Yeah, it's loading from disk. Okay, now let me move myself down so you can see a little more. To the dragon for dragging and dragooning us until we wrote this book. To Elder Brother Wu as a representative of financial realities. If the dragon held the carrot, Wu held the stick. To Barbara Finger for everything from encouragement to copy reading. And that is a tough job to our families for their patience and support during this project. Yeah, sorry, uh, Dad has to work on a video game. Oh, could I watch too? No, no, you can't. Okay, so this is the program as I typed it in. So the data statements have all the uh, data for the thing. So you're reading who and the reason. Who is the dragon? And this is the reason. Who is Elder Brother Wu? And then there was a missing comma in there that I caught. And let's list uh, 0 to 100. Okay. Um, I added print character string 21 because if you're in PR number 3 and you run it, you want it to be in 40 columns. Okay. And uh, your dimensioning arrays, there are four people to thank and you're reading the data so the data has to exactly match uh, or if you run out of data you'll get an error if there's too much data you, you won't know it'll just read up to four because that's your loop all right and then you print who and thanks and then i had to get the spacing right because there are some things that wrapped the way i so that it wraps nicely uh, financial realities it would have broken it Okay, so that's the, um, that is the uh, dedication program, and this is a Protoss disk, and I'm working on Taipan, Taipan book, which will have the main program that the book is writing, and so far I'm up to line 22, but I've started capturing um, code from the PDF into a file, which is over, where's the file, the TP file, oh, here it is. Okay, so you uh, store your code on TP. <laughs> All right, so in the book, it has, uh, the PDF has text, but when you copy from the PDF text, it's not as accurate, and there are some interesting ways that it tries to interpret this font. So, um, you know, they give examples. But what's great about this 225-page book is it is a story. And uh, the important thing about this introduction here, okay, people stopped playing video games, but everybody got home computers. And uh, home computers make possible a type of electronic game which is much less based on exercising the reflexive speed of a person's brainstem. Did you know you were doing that when you're playing shoot 'em ups? Uh, <laughs> exercise your gray matter with your thinking. So the best of such games are those which simulate a complex environment and allow the player to interact in a lifelike manner with the game environment. I'm just going to put a message in chat. Hi, I'm live and can chat. Okay. Uh, if I wasn't the live, would I still be able to chat? Harry Houdini tried to do that. It didn't work. 
Okay, among the best of such games, yes, simulating a complex environment, and they're calling them contextual computer games, and I never heard that term before. They became role-playing games or adventure games, so it's a wave of the future from 1986 future. Okay, taking advantage of the computer. Uh, yeah, the complexity of all the elements in the game. So what's great about Daibon is it um, keeps track of all your money and um, what uh, is going on in the world and uh, the prices. It, and it does the calculations for you. So if you try to buy more than you can. Okay, so baseball's complex, but it doesn't take Einstein to play it because there's an umpire. So the computer's playing an umpire. Okay, it tells you when you're out, or if you broke the rules, but you just play and have fun. And that's, that was a miracle of computers growing up that, uh, yeah, you'd have to, in, like D&D, &D, you would have to write things down and uh, do, but uh, there's this um, advantages and disadvantages, but we grew up with computers. So this is the goal of the book. Understanding fundamental principles of game design. Well, make it fun, make it work without, without bugs, and uh, you know, don't make it crash like the Kobayashi. <laughs> okay, uh, geographical and historical understanding of a particular game context, in this case Asia and the turbulent China trade of the 1800s. A step to step approach of actually writing a game in basic using these two points. And that's what this book's about. There's some stuff you could type in. Okay, you're trying to give me many hours of entertainment. I don't know how many hours I'll devote to that, but uh, there is interesting background information, and I would love to uh, learn some of this stuff um, what Hong Kong was in the mid 1800s. Um, yeah, how you traded, um, all the things that happened on the sea, um, how you deal with pirates, and the whole context of trade in China with imperialism and uh, colonization. In other words, it was a dragon. <laughs> okay, drag on. Mid 1800s, no computers. Well, maybe a what was Babbage's analytical engine? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, he didn't have light bulbs yet. Edison was the late 1800s. Okay, so there's a novel, which I got to read, uh, James Clavell um, and Dynasty by Robert Elegant to talk about the China trade. So I'll probably get it on tape at the library and listen to it. All right. Fearless and amoral merchant smugglers well, in Firefly, they're, they're moral because they have Shepherd Book, right? Okay, they struggled and fought, lived to the fullest and died, made or lost fortunes in East Asia. Newly opened markets, okay? The doors had been blasted down by an overwhelming military might of the young nations of Europe. Young? <laughs> and America, okay. England, France, Holland, Portugal, and Spain had established important colonial footholds providing local bases for their fleets, missionaries, and merchants. Commodore Perry's intimidating black feet of fleet of American ships had forced the Shogun to open Japan to the traders of the West. So forcing a culture to open their trade, they could have been isolated and never cared, but opium war, oh, this is terrible. Um, they got all these people addicted a humiliating defeat upon the Manchu obligating China to accept trade, even in the hated of addictive opium. All right, um, we'll leave that for college history class to debate. Throughout East Asia in that violent time, there were warlords and rebels who would pay huge sums for modern Western arms. Europe in return hungered for the tea, spices, silks, and gold of the fabled Orient. Yeah, when uh, Columbus came to America, he thought he was in India. Immense fortunes could be made by men, maybe women at the time, without principles to hinder them if they were brave enough. The China, see, this is just context, history, facts. That's all it is. We got to take it for what it is and learn from it and 
build our own lives. The China traders were just such men, although the native peoples called them many other less complimentary names, the Chinese expression Daibon was the one seized upon as a title by these western traders of the China seas. Tai in Chinese means great or gib or even supreme. Pan means leader or boss. So it's big boss, great boss. In a, but there's tonality in the Chinese language. So yeah, I wonder how they actually inflected it. All right, the Chinese traders took the name to mean supreme leader. This term is still used for the heads of trading firms. Well, that makes sense from Hong Kong to Singapore. Now they're trading Bitcoin. But to the Chinese, or oh, they're trading um, ransomware, right? <laughs> yeah, but the, the Chinese, anyone not Chinese was a barbarian, even if such a person was a big boss. Now, some of my prejudices may seep out. Um, I don't intend for them. I don't intend to be prejudiced. But growing up in a society where I was exposed to prejudice, it's a challenge to censor myself and think. Okay, the China trade followed one of the customary rules of business. The greater the potential for profit, the greater the risk. But the risks to the Taipans were greater than merely going bankrupt. There was always a strong possibility of sudden and unnatural death. I'm probably just going to read the introduction and then do the coding. Pirates roamed the seas some of them in operating in vast fleets out of ports and coves from Japan to the Malay Islands. For the most part, these fleets were under strict military organization, and they were manned by Japanese, Chinese, Malay, and European seamen, mercenary adventurers, to match the likes of the Daibons upon whom they preyed. Often the wisest thing a China trader could do was to pay out whatever the pirate chieftains demanded in tribute. Whoops. Rather than face the dangers of deadly pirate attacks. But even if one pirate organization had been bribed not to attack, an independent pirate game might unpredictably attack. Thus the Taipans armed their clipper ships, lorches, and junks heavily. So that's some research to figure out the difference between those ships. Another troublesome factor was the presence of triads. Whoa! Triads. Okay, where did I... Thank you. Um, Adobe? Where am I? Help! I'm lost. The text went away. <laughs> okay, use the arrow keys instead of the mouse. Okay, here we are. Another troublesome factor was the presence of triads, the underworld secret societies of the Chinese. These triads were to be found wherever large numbers of Chinese lived or worked. Originally founded as Chinese resistance organizations against the hated Manchu rulers of China, the triads had also gradually become organized crime syndicates which wielded violence and money as weapons to exert their power and influence. While Western bankers were often unwilling to extend credit to the Daibons, sometimes the triads would at very steep interest rates. Of course, it could be very dangerous not to repay such a loan on time. This, then, was the world of the China trade, where incredible risks were taken daily by the Daibons, where enormous riches could be grabbed by the fearless, the resourceful, and the lucky. This is the context around which you are about to build yourself a computer game in Apple Soft Basic. And that's an interesting uh, image there, dragons eating each other. I don't know. Okay. And here's some pictures of the ships. Uh, Hong Kong Harbor in the 1800s. So it's interesting to see mountains in the background. Like where do you dock? Dock in the water and swim? You take a canoe? What do you do? Okay, so we're going to build a simulation game. And they're teaching you you can't take everything into account. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
um, personal psychology habits and economic position of every person, even partly involved in the China trade. You know, the only way you could do that is to go into the fourth dimension and check the Akashic records, okay? But we can't do that now. Not only that, but you'd have to account for the tides and weather conditions of in each tiny patch of the China seas. You'd have to know the location of and behavior of all the wharf rats. <laughs> I want to be a wharf rat. Then what about fluctuations in the financial markets of Europe? Political connivings of the eunuchs in the Chinese imperial court. Ouch. The effect of frost on silkworms. Very important. Yeah, know your product. The effect of um, RF uh, capacitors on aging Apple IIs. Hmm. RFI capacitors. <laughs> These are only a handful of possible items which can be enumerated. Many seem unimportant, irrelevant, but a butterfly in China can affect uh, Bitcoin prices in New York. Okay, but they all added to the actual environmental context of the real Daibons. So how do you take them into account? You choose <laughs> smartly. Uh, we can do something where it feels as though these kinds of factors are part of the program. So you're playing with the player's brain yeah, make it feel like uh, the weather matters or that psychology of Elder Brother Wu or that Lian is actually thinking that maybe you can, uh, that your donations to the temple, uh, yeah, he's going to lay off of you on the seas, right? <laughs> okay, so common events, bad weather, yeah, you could read all about this. Um, a built-in random number generator. Sure. Trade-offs, that's the big one. Yeah. Every system has trade-offs. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, urgency. Yeah, if you're bitten by a snake, what do you do? Hmm. And vary the factor of urgency. Motivation. Okay, what motivates people? Lust. That period. Now, lust for money, drive to gain social status, pleasure of accomplishing something difficult. Okay. In Daibon, we will attempt to motivate with greed and pride. Greed is good. Greed is vital because only with this the player can the player fit into the role of a Daibon, the role into which our game will thrust the player. So this is a role-playing game then. You may wonder how real greed could be generated in a mere game. After all, there's no real money involved. But when you play Monopoly, yeah, you get a little greedy. And then uh, if you get a million in this game, you're going to want to go to a billion, a trillion. Okay, yeah, solitaire. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, we're just trying to free our minds of the daily grind and have some fun. Okay, so the difficulty... Yeah, how, how difficult do you make the game? If you're Lord British, you make it really difficult. If you're um, doing Hitchhiker's Guide as an adventure, you make it impossible to. <laughs> and this is a cool picture. A TRS-80 Model 3 computer being used to write a book, <laughs> or where the page is coming, they're flying. They're airplanes, or they're flying out the window. Very nice artwork. Okay, here we start firing up the Apple computer. And the nice thing about these days is emulators cut and paste into a notepad or text edit. And just to show you how it comes in, uh, make it bigger. See the kind of bugs that come in. Initialization A string equals elder brother UU. And <laughs> Yamoto and Smythe and Zero. So here's, yeah, so you see it's reading the font and trying to interpret the font. So I went through this. Um, okay, let me show you when I run this. I got this working this morning, um, and I made it look better. Um, yeah, the, the spaces between the letters are in the code, and uh, I just uh, yeah moved things uh, 
adjust slightly adjusted the horizontal tabbing and this is part of the code you use a space 40 spaces in inverse mode to generate the bars like that so that's cool to see rather than reading the code <laughs> and that code went up to line 22 so here's the code that I have captured so far and the speed 100 is what made it run slower so I'm just going to run it again so you see that slowness that speed equals 100 in context and then Hayden book company okay and then it goes back to 255 and then goes back to normal there is some flashing in this because this was the 1980s we we're all about flash all about marquees <laughs> all right so um i could just continue coding from here so let's see how yeah i've already uh, edited this code i'm just going to start pasting in a line at a time okay in micro made it's control shift v and let's see what we got did it accept it So this is Applesoft parsing it, and it looks like it did a pretty good job. I'm just spot checking it. Okay, read G string sub i. Now I could do like two or three lines at a time. Let's just see how that works. Oops. Control shift B. 40, 50. Okay, so we got a little cleanup to do on 50, it looks like. So what happened here? X string. Oh, see these these double quotes. Yeah, these fancy quotes mess us up. So what I like to do when I'm editing is go into 80 column mode. Okay. And uh, so 40. Let's see. Four loops. Reading data. Six to the five minus j. That's interesting. And go sub 180. Why isn't there a space? Okay. Will it work? I thought there was this Applesoft parses that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so let's edit line 50. So escape. Okay, so when you are in Zoom, don't use the escape key in Zoom. You have to click in the window and then escape I, I. Okay, so you can use IJKM or the arrows. I'm going to edit line 50 here. I'm just, I pressed space when I got to the 50 and then I'm just copying with the right arrow that reads all the data from the screen into the input buffer and x string equals nothing which i think is what was intended so i have to double check with the book as well uh, which is where <laughs> put this thing okay hide floating panel console okay properties uh, where's the book your preview okay so what were we looking at okay that's talking about the intro i'm just gonna look at the code tonight here so we're initializing variables there's that six to the five minus j exponentiation so there's a two-dimensional array and it's reading numbers and doing some calculations okay so it explains all about that um, what the variables represent okay it's a nice little tutorial if you're learning AppleSoft. And also, yeah, production of silk was extremely labor-intensive. 700,000 silkworms per pound. Wow. And caterpillars. Wow. Opium was not unknown to the Chinese, but it had been used in medicine. Yeah, traditional Chinese medicine is very interesting to learn about uh, for us these days. Commissioner Lin Si Hu. Okay. Impounded 20,000 chests, 133 pounds of opium from the British traders, had it burned publicly. England launched the Opium War, 1839 to 42. Hmm. Yep, that's how countries act, though physically, mentally, politically, and economically destructive to the Chinese. Did Nixon do better when he opened up? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, lion share. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, here's some data. Hong Kong, Fuchao. These are the places we can visit. These are the months, and these are the products we can trade in. And this data is what's used in those uh, 
statements. Now, where was that X string? Uh, was that earlier or later? Because they go back and forth on the code. Yeah, sorry, I'm scrolling too much here. Yeah, thank you, Adobe. Okay, let's just see here. All right, I'm just looking to see. I think it's later on we add that code. Okay, so uh, so there's a point when they repeat all the code. I'll get to that. And then we could verify. Trust but verify. Mm -hmm. Nice map. Okay, geography. Yeah, the data, the places. Liverpool. Going to see the Beatles? No. Have to wait a hundred years for them. 1839, several drunken British sailors killed Ling, a Chinese villager. Oh my. Great history here to read. Fu Chao, capital of the what province? Hmm. Okay. Nagasaki. Wow. That's stuff I didn't know here. You better learn. Okay. Batavia. Wow. Mixing history and code. Hmm. Elder Brother Wu at the office. Which one is he? <laughs> He's praying, let the other guys do the dirty work. <laughs> okay, a space time machine. Okay, so we're setting up our time machine to go back to 1860. And in order to do that, we need a price variation subroutine. All right, GP sub I, AP sub LI, random numbers, so that you're figuring out a random uh, increment. Base price array adds a random fraction of itself, knocks off any decimals, and puts the resulting number into GP sub I. Okay. You also have used this method generally. Undimension variables start at zero. Uh oh. <laughs> this is not strict. Okay, so 50. Here's the X string. It is two quotes. So let's go back to Micromate. Uh, we're fine. Go sub 590. Yep. Home, go to 120. Okay. List. I'm going to save it just so we don't lose it. Now, some people save uh, like many versions. Um, initially, when I started coding on the Apple basic, I had like fish one, fish two, fish three, fish four. Like I, I had to go back and I, I didn't want to lose any earlier version of a file, but I'm just going to save Taipan book, overwrite it. Okay. Now we'll continue just coding this stuff. Now this data, let's see how well it gets the spacing. Okay, that came in well. Let's see if I can do 80, 81, and 90. Very nice. Okay, the dot November, what happened there? That's in my code here. All right, so I might as well fix it here and edit it in here. Yeah. Now, in the Apple, escape, right arrow, space bar. That means it won't copy the period. So then if you list 81, it looks good. Okay, we got our products in 90, and now this was a pain to get the numbers of data right. So let's paste that. I'm using app command V on the Mac. What am I doing? Shift function V. It's control shift V. Okay. All right. Now we could compare every number, but we'll know if there's an anomaly in the game. Right. Okay, so that's how I transcribed it. Um, let's see here, hide. 
Okay, where is look, the data? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And line 50. So let's look at our code here. List 50. And so wait a minute. 0 to 9, read L0 sub i. So L0 sub 0 is an 8 in my book here. Now, where is it? So what's a oh, 110? Okay, I didn't get there. So in line 50. So there's data. So I guess our next thing we want to do is see if it reads all the data correctly. And then we can spot check and do a little testing. OK, so we're going to copy that. I'm going to paste everything in here. Oh, I have it. OK, here's the data. Go 110. OK, and let's just spot check that against the book. Can I do that easily? Book and Micromate. Let's see if I put it in a window, it would work better. All right, book, micromate. Okay, 21, 14, 7, 0, 35, 49, 56, 42, 84, 200. Hi, hut. <laughs> okay, so I'm just looking for code in here. Uh, do I have the 585? Yes, I do. Okay, let me just see if I copy this. to the code. Okay, we got some cleanup to do here. Why? 590 VTAB 15. So I got some stinking character in there, huh? The double, uh, is there a control character? And look at that, press, okay, let's walk through it. Okay, we, okay. Okay, escape. 590, the tab 15, h tab 8, print. Okay, we want uh, this in normal. The semicolon means it'll continue on the same line. Then we're going to go into flash mode and print spacebar. And then, uh, is that a semi? Yeah, it should be a semicolon. Then a colon, then normal. Okay, then print, um, okay, spacebar to start. Oh, so the word spacebar is in flash, and then the right arrow is here to start. That should be a single quote, semicolon. All right, press spacebar to start, semicolon, colon. Go sub 60, if nothing. If it equals space, then return. Okay, so you're checking to see what the person hit. So if they typed another letter besides a space bar, it'll go down to 511 and it'll do some randomization. So now see that put an L instead of a 1. That's your font tricking it out. See, into range integer 1 plus 9 plus 1. So I thought this was an L and this was a 1. I guess the parentheses it interpreted it. Okay, so um, see that what I what I think it's doing here is it's in a loop because um, you let's look at sixty, which I didn't type in, huh? Interesting. Do I have a sixty? No, I did. Okay, so they give you a code later. Okay, so. It's going to like check for a key and put it in X string. And then if you didn't type a key yet, it's going to pick a random number and go in this loop. But why is 511? This should be 591. You see? Nines and ones. OK, so fix the typo. Mm -hmm. OK, this is how programs were built in the old days. Uh, it's uh, little blocks at a time, and you try to test it um, as you're coding so that um, it was test-driven development, essentially. <laughs> you would um, code, test, code, test, and, and yet a tight loop. So, and 
then you learned all the wrong methods when you went to college <laughs> and you went to work and uh, learned how to do COBOL. <laughs> all right. And then how production systems really break, what not to do so they don't break. And you never learn those lessons, right? So you keep making the same mistakes. All right, VTAB4, we did 20, 21, 22, 30. All right, so we have all these lines. List with a control S. Yeah, let's go back and make sure we got all the lines. We have 5, 10, I added 7 and 8. Get out of 80 columns and draw at full speed, because like if you break it in the speed equals 100, and you list, you're, it's going to be slow, creeping text. Okay. So I add little enhancements to it. B string is 39 spaces, and the A string here has 40 spaces. Line 20 we got. Line 21, 22, 30. We got 40, 50. Okay. And we got, yeah, okay. 50, we got 65, 70 with the data. We got 80. 81, 90, 100, 110. Okay, so here's our 180. We need this routine. So where was the 60? Yeah, 50. I thought I saw a go sub 60, unless I got that wrong. I probably did. Yeah, go sub 60, which doesn't exist yet. Okay. So let's see. We didn't get the 175 and 180. We have 585, 590, and 591. So you could tell that uh, they were coding and then they thought of this later, or they wanted a tight loop here, but the 511, go to 590, oh, that 511 is wrong. Yeah, that was me. Okay. So, yeah, remember to clean up after yourself. Okie dokie, 180. We want, uh, yeah, 175 and 180, so let's... Did I have it here? I have it here. I didn't put it in. Okay. Well, I pasted and it didn't work. Control Shift V. Okay. And let's list 175 to 180. Okay. Yeah, that nice formula. Okay, so we're in sync. We have 591 at the end. Yes. Okay, we've used our Apple II for a purpose never envisioned by its designers. It has operated as a space-time machine to initialize us onto the China coast of the 1860s. So it's warping space-time for us. Okay, I want to save it again. Save type Daiban book. And then let's try running it and see where it breaks. A game in context. Okay, nice. What's our syntax error? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? All right, where is it? M string. There's commas here. It should be a comma then. The, so, nice little trick. Poke 3333 and list 30. And look what that did. It, uh, it, it set the right margin to 33. So this stays fixed and this part scrolls. And now your escape with the arrow keys goes up here. And now you could scroll through and put the comma in, fix up your syntax. And the reason I'm doing this is because for long lines, if you put too many blanks it could reach the limit of the longest line, which is around 200 something, 250 maybe. Okay, it's like a tweet, 240 characters. <laughs> All right, now list 30. All right, I'm just gonna run it now. Okay, will it? Uh, see, that's a bug. I really need to poke 334 or text. Yeah, there needs to be a text at the top. Okay. And see, that's the speed here. Yeah, that, that's the speed demon thing. I want to break out of this. Okay. Yeah, speed equals 255. All right. 
what we want to do is text uh, line seven. How about line six? Yeah, so you list uh, five to seven, five to ten. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to insert a line six text. All right. Save. Die. Ban. Book. So I don't lose that bug fix. All right. So are we still in 33 mode? Yeah. Okay, so now let's see if text fixes it. Run. Yes, it did. See, it restored the 40 column screen, and we still have a syntax error. Why? Dimension M G A P G G L G P V, and for i equals 0 to 9, print read. That's the problem there. Colon missing. All right, is that in the code? Let's look at 30. Double check. All right. Adobe. Here we are. Okay. Um, dimensions for I read. Did I have a question mark? If it interpreted a question mark in here, zero to nine, that colon it thought was a question mark. Then read L string sub I. Yep. Okay. So do this poke 33, 33, list 30, and get rid of that print. And we'll, then we should be fine. Let's see. So two, nine. Yeah, so you see this garbage over here? It's not copying it because we're in 33 uh, column mode here. Read Elstrom, sub I, next I, F read, no, four. I equals 0 to 11, read M string, next I, and then read G string, read your G string. <laughs> okay, save. Um, yeah. Type M book. Get okay. Now syntax error in 40. <laughs> okay, where is it? Times six to the five, and that makes j. Next j comma i, ah, g zero sub. So yeah, another thing I found in copying from the book, these go subs, it doesn't know the difference. Yeah, when you're parsing text, uh, OCR, a zero and an O. It's making the same human errors we used to make in the 70s. All right. So this is short enough. I could just um, la di do di da da di do da di do di da la di do di da la di do di da la di do di da da di do da di do di da. Go sub. 180. Now look at it. Nice. That's my. That's what gives me, let's see, 41 on. Do we have any more ghost subs? Yes, we do. That's where these ghost subs are. So let's fix that. Any other ghost subs? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I could do this too. Okay, so read L0 sub I. So I want to make sure that that's right, or is it low? <laughs> low or low zero? <laughs> Maybe we'll find out soon. <laughs> that could be a logic error that will sneak up on you if you have the wrong variable name. Go sub. All right. All right, run 50. Yeah, run it again. Hmm, what happened? Still a 40. 0 to 9, 0 to 5. Read. A P sub I, blah, blah, blah. 5 minus J, next J, comma, I. Go sub 180. Thought I fixed it. So this is hard to see. 
Oh, two commas. There you go. Eight pieces by. So the OCR was seeing double. Nice. Okay, where's the error? Integer AP, could it be parentheses? AP sub LI plus random one times AP sub L comma I, blah, blah, blah. All right, let's look at it here. Our I is zero to five. GP sub I is the integer one parentheses AP LI plus random parentheses random one times AP sub L comma I the three colon next I is that print return yeah so they thought this was a question mark okay easy at least it wasn't the parentheses next I return all right, save it. Okay. I'm remembering a comment in the DOS manual, like say you're working on a beer inventory program and then you mistype it as bear inventory, B-E-A-R, and then you think you've lost your code, but it's under the bear. <laughs> okay, so remember what you call your files when you're typing in code this way. <laughs> Okay, and out of data. We're out of data. Um, yeah, by the way, data in um, Star Trek um, Nemesis, that's when he dies. But um, his essence is preserved until Picard. Okay, so go spend the money for Paramount Plus. <laughs> Okay, list. How much data are we reading here? Line 50, is it L0 or L O? Line low, L0. As long as we're consistent. So we read 9, but you know what we could do while we're here is print L O sub 0, but it print L0 sub 0. We have 14. List 100. List uh, 110. 14 is 1. Huh. So we're off by 1, I think. Because the 14 is here. It should have been a 21. Okay, so where could we be off by 1? Well, now it's time to check line 100. 822452. 822452. 821843, 821843. So, um, yeah, sometimes 80 column is good. Let's just look at that. Yeah, okay. So, uh, trying to press Control X. Okay, so we can do like this uh, 822452, 821843. Then we got 9336. Five four six four two eight six five four two eight six five. Then we got three three four seven four four two. Okay, and then we got four five four three five four five four three five. Okay, so we chunk things in our brain in groups of seven. So like a phone number. Here's five three four. Okay, so this is interesting. Why am I seeing that? All right. Three, four, three, five. Okay, where? See, don't talk when you're doing this. Nine, three, three. Don't chat. No one's chatting. All right, nine, three, three, six, five, four, six, and two, eight, six, five. Then three, three, four, seven, four, four, two. Three, three, four, seven, four, four, two is the phone number. 
Four five four three five. Four five four three five. Anyone remember when phone numbers were five digits and you had um, to uh, dial like a, a, a two-letter code using the keypad on the using the rotary dial? Okay. Three four five five two six three. Three four five five two six three. Then one. One four five. I got a one five six three, four five three nine nine one nine five. Okay, so what is going on here? One five six three. Get rid of the four. Then you have one five. Oh, I got extra data. So, so why do I have an end of data? What is that right? One two three four five. Five times seven and twelve. Should be 60 rows now. Looking at my, uh, it must have been this stuff over here. So let's just make it look like the manual. Okay, so it's that stuff. There's some extra data in here. Now I'm going to press Escape and cursor over here so I don't copy those spaces. It wouldn't matter, but it might. <laughs> okay, one five six. So five three three. Here's the five three three, right? I got okay, so something extra here. What happened? Three four five. Three four five five two six three. That this is the extra stuff. And that is what I want to finish with. One five six three four five three nine nine one nine five. So I had extra data and it ran out of data. Huh. Strange. Well, I mean, yeah, be logical when you're thinking, and you'll see later why that may be the case. Okay, so I think we're good now. Let's run it. Okay, this is the grind of testing. Out of data error again. Okay, so is it reading something earlier? Before 50? Yeah, right? Read A P sub I comma J. Alright, so and then let, let's go look for all the read statements here. Okay, let's just see if it where it makes sense or not. So we're reading too much earlier, I think, here. So L string sub I. Okay, print L string sub zero. Hong Kong. L string sub nine. Jan. Uh oh. Zero to nine. Should that be one to nine or zero to eight? Are we missing a location? We might be. How many locations? List 70. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There should be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Singapore, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so this thing at 40, it's at 30. So one thing we could do is a breakpoint after 30. We could do, so there's no 31, so we could do 31, stop. It's like a breakpoint in AppleSoft. Okay. All right. Now 30 is dimensioning variables. It's reading L string sub i. So print L string sub 0. Hong Kong. Print L string sub 9. Jan. So there's something missing. There's 10. It's not getting them all. So what was that, 70? All right. What's 8? Liverpool? Yeah. So 0 through 8 is what we read. So we're missing one. Is there? Ah, the period there instead of a comma. So let's do this. Poke 33, 33. So like 1, if I had looked at that, print L string sub 1. Fuchu Shanghai, 
Hu Chao Shanghai. Sounds like a Chinese dinner. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to poke 33, 33, and list 70, and I'm going to fix the error. Okay. And I want to, is there a space? Yeah, I want to get rid of that extra space. Okay. There we go. Now I should just be able to run it. Should get out of the 33 mode. Nice. Yeah, make things easy on yourself. Add code to make testing easier. And now I can take out my breakpoint. Yeah, uh, don't leave a monkey wrench in your code. You will. <laughs> and it'll get into production. Okay, out of data. So 30. All right, so let's just make sure our L string sub 9 is Liverpool. Okay, good. See, this is what's so great about Apple Soft integer base and just uh, debugging on the fly. All right, so 40, we read AP, so it's this AP crap. List 100. Print AP sub 00. zero. Whoa. Uh, is it calculating? Oh, no. It reads AP sub i comma j, and then it calculates. So, you know, that shouldn't be done in the same sentence, same statement. So now I can't debug it. But what is that? 9, it's 10 times 6. So 60 minus 1 is 59. Print AP sub 59. Look at that. Oh, okay. So it's AP sub 9 comma 5. A thirty-five. Let's see, nine comma four, zero. What's going on? List forty. Zero to nine. J is zero to five. Read that, and you're setting it to something else. I'm gonna do a little debugging here with a print statement. So watch this. All right, so for j equals 0 to 5, and I'm just going to use this extra space to code, read that ap sub i comma j, print ap sub i comma j, semi quote, quote, yeah, semi, and then the colon ap sub i j equals this. So I want to see the data that it's reading before it mangles it. Okay, run. I want to see where it's going wrong. Syntax error in 40. Nice. Uh, read. I forgot to. Uh, I got to get that bracket off there. This thing. Mm -hmm. Semi with a space semi. Okay, yeah, I want one space between each number that I read from the data. Okay, now try it. Okay, so these are the uh, there's a 21 in there. That's the problem, and a 35. Now we can debug. That's a nice little trick we learned here. Okay, so let's see. Can I see them both? Yeah, if I move this up here. Okay, 822, This is what we were editing before. 633, Eight six five three three four seven four four two four five four three five. Okay, then three four five five two six three one four. Wait a minute. One four five three three. Where is it? One four. One four five three three. So there's a five six three that got stuck in there. 
and one five six. Yeah, something got all messed up here. Do these numbers match these numbers? Six, five. Three, three, four, seven, four. I'm comparing up here. Three, five, three, four, five, five, two, six, three, six. Yeah, so it read exactly what I typed in, and then it got to the 21. So I didn't have enough data in 100 for some reason. I'm reading. I bet there's more to it. I want to go back and see what we started with, uh, with 100. All right. Yeah, here's some, OK. One, two, three, four, five lines of data times, wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 12 times 5 is 60. But we're reading how much? 60, 10 times 0 to 5 is 60. 10 times 6. Mm -hmm. OK. Then I don't have 60 bytes in 100. How many do we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 28. And 28 and 14. Yeah, I didn't learn to count by 14s. Huh? <laughs> 28 and 10 is 38 and 4 is 42. 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Yeah, I'm missing five bytes, five data items here. So there's something I'm missing from this list that's not here. Okay, this is where you ruin your eyes. Okay. Eight, two, one, eight, four, three. Nine, three, three. I took out five bytes earlier. I took out the wrong five bytes. Nine, three, three, six, five, four, six, four, two, eight, six, five. Three, three, four, seven, four, four, two, four, five. Oh, yeah, there's a only four. Eight, three, four, seven, four, four, two, four, five, four, three, five, three, four, five, five, two, six, three, one, four. Right there, I'm missing pi. <laughs> Now watch this. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, so 100 data, and I'm going to do escape just to get rid of those spaces before the first item. And I see the 314 is where I have to do some insertions. So it's 345526 five, in here. 345526. Three one four five three three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Three one four five three three. And then the one. Escape over that. One five six three four five three nine nine one nine five. All right. Believe it or not, that fixed it. <laughs> Okay, there's your data on 100. Let's just run it. <sighs> okay, that's my debugging. So remember to take out the monkey wrench. But I got a 63 in there. Why? Okay, so let's see. Now, kids used to do this over and over with programs from magazines that had data statements like this to get it right. 
and <laughs> this brings back memories. Nine three three six five four six four two eight six five. I probably forgot a comma. Yeah, I bet I could just list that. Where's my sixty three? There it is. I forgot a comma. If I forgot a period, that would be bad. <laughs> Okay, let's fix the 63 and see if that fixes it. Yeah, try to take, try to find shortcuts to your work that are reasonable. So the six, then escape left, space, comma, three. So there's a comma between them now in the input buffer. And I could list 100 and see that's good and run it. And if this works, I'm saving it. I'm taking that out before I save it, but something like that you, you may want to put keep in somewhere in a real program. You may want to comment out some debugging logic. All right, uh, hide. Okay, so we got past that data problem. Um, list forty. Yeah, list forty-one. Let's do this. I want to keep that in. So 41 is going to be, see, I'm, I'm going to make an equivalent statement to the 40. Okay, so for 40, I want, okay, so, okay, I want the print statement in there. So like for 41, yeah, let me do that again. Okay, here's 40. What I want to do for 41 after the print statement, I want my 41 to be after that semicolon. So this is going to be the dat, the statement on line 41. And there's no flow of control issue there. But on line 40, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to put a remark. OK, because I want to keep that print logic if I need it in the future. So I'm going to put a rem and then put a question mark print and semicolon. Okay, now let's list 40 to 41. Okay, now see the remark kept all the spaces, so let's clean that up. So the next maintenance programmer won't kill us. Okay, if you ever read COBOL, you'd see blocks and blocks of comments trying to explain why you're using this language and why it'll fail on Y2K. <laughs> yeah, get out of, uh, yeah, comments advising you to retire before 2000. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Save. What am I doing here? Type handbook. I've been going at it for an hour and 10 minutes now. Let's see if we could debug this part. I think that might be enough unless I want to keep going all night. <sighs> all right, did it save? Oh, see, the drive is running. <laughs> okay, just got to check something. <laughs> okay, let's see, did that work? Just checking the job that ran at 7 p.m. And uh, let's see. Uh, okay, succeeded. Uh, okay, just have one step. Okay. Good. All righty. What's next? Run. Okay, next error. Undefined statement error in 50. 
and that is the ghost sub 590 ghost sub 5000 yep we're going places that don't exist yep is 590 there yes okay go sub 5000 so we'll get there so let's just keep going with the code use your map geography yep, where we are okay French interests in Vietnam began as early as 1648. Wow. There will be a test on the history. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, space time machine. Okay, we got through 50. Let's make sure there was a ghost sub 5000. Yep. Okay. Low sub i so it's l o so i want to change my l zeros here number three list okay change all l zero to l well, let's see what could we do something in micromate to dump to a text file ouch that hurt. uh yeah you probably can or you can cut and paste um but let's do it the old-fashioned way Okay, looking for L zeros. <laughs> that went a little too fast, but I didn't think it was here. Um, where is dimension L string? Read L O sub I. So it's not dimensioned, right? 50. So the font they chose for the code is not helpful. Right? X string equals one space or nothing. X string equals nothing. Okay. And that is L O. Yeah, low. Low. So I. Okay, from one ten. And home and go to one twenty. Okay. Low, low, low. One ten. That's the data. So print low sub zero. Now let's run it and see what happens now. Yeah, we have to uh, get it to use the LO array now to, by running it. And now we could see print LO sub zero, 21 as we expected, list 110. Okay, print LO sub nine, 200. Print LO sub eight, 84. So we have some confidence. Okay, let's find some more code. Randomize, we did 590, 591, and the lines we've used so far. So this is just the um, recap of the code, which we were here before. Okay, what's next? Waiting for our ship to come in. Waiting, 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 waiting. Okay, so main display, 115. We don't have yet. I don't have it in my code here, so time to copy some new code. All right. So I could copy up to here. And then uh, get rid of the text. So, yeah, I wanna, you know, while I'm here, let me edit as we go in the notepad. All right, so font here, we'll make it 18. Okay, main display, and I wanna parenthesis. 
So it thought that that's an angle bracket. Uh, go sub 130, go to 220. Okay. And then we got V tab I. Is it one and one? Yeah, they're not I's. Let's make sure they're ones. Tab one, it's an I. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then let's see those. The, yeah, so delete backwards. Print port. And it's a semicolon L string sub L. See that semicolon? Yeah, it's a dot matrix. <laughs> L string sub L, semicolon, colon, uh -huh. H tab to what? 28. So it interpreted the 8 as some foreign character. Uh -huh. Colon, use my own colon, print, M string sub M semicolon. Okay, I want to yeah, redo all the quotes. There's a dot space quote, semicolon. How did we survive in those days with our eyes? DA plus one. Okay, semicolon, quote, comma, quote, yeah, there's the comma. Uh, semicolon y okay not a 38 that's not part of the code all right now am I getting these dots here yeah it's like a bulleted list okay yeah let's so yeah this is cool let's just put these in and see if we get syntax errors so AppleSoft doesn't tell you syntax errors until you run the code integer basic will tell you syntax errors Hide and seek, and we shall find. Okay, 115, Control Shift V. Nice, it's a remark. All right, copy paste. You couldn't do this on a real Apple II unless you had a modem. Yeah, you could have done a direct modem connection to what, a teletype terminal or <laughs> download this from a BBS. Yeah. Have your friends type it in now that, that's interesting we got some quote problems so these fa fancy quotes i gotta fix them all so and i can't just do change see if i had vi i would do uh, colon dot comma dollar sign search slash blah slash uh, quote slash g and that would do it but applesoft says nope <laughs> so i'm gonna fix it here V tab H tab print port quote L string sub L semi okay print M string sub M semi period so money maybe D A plus one quote comma quote semi Y okay so it's printing some data which we will explain um, here we go a port followed by a space in the name of the port Right, the L string away, L away, print L string. Nope, print low string sub zero. Nope, L string. I didn't run it. Let's run it and just see if we could print that. It's going to stop at 50. <sighs> so let's. Okay, so let's list, uh, what was this line? 130. The port, and then in the middle of the screen, H tab 28, for an M string sub M. Okay, so M is the month. So let's see if we got our months. Print M string sub zero, Jan, M string sub 11. December and M string sub 12 should be out of bounds. Good. Okay, and then DA day of the month. Is it assigned? DA zero, not assigned yet. 
Oh, it adds one. Okay, so that would have been a one. And a semi comma y. Why? 1860 is the year. Wow. Okay, so this is starting to make some sense. Okay, and that's giving us some confidence in our code. Now, what do we got to do here? 140. I'm gonna copy all this. Oh, yeah, this is fun. Molasses to rum, two slaves. It's from the 1776 uh, musical. Oops, don't copy the book. <laughs> All right, I guess I got to copy one page. Yeah. Thought I was able to, but this is Adobe copying. Okay, hold and go sub. Copy my, uh, just how about O sub? Just O sub it. O sub. G. Yeah, it's a go sub. Okay, now 141. Goods aboard ship Hong Kong go down. What? <laughs> normal. This is normal. Yeah, we're acting really normal tonight. Now, why is this? I can't copy. See, if I do that and I press that, I get goods normal. I don't get the line that I want. But if I highlight from here to go down, it will get that. Now, why? The column layout? Yeah. You see? Goods normal. But look what it did. It put goods normal is really the next thing. So you got to futz with it like that. All right, let's make it bigger and fix it. And we do what? Um, font. I don't need no stinking fonts. All right. V tab two inverse. All right, let's see, I'm going to bring them on one line here for pasting. Cash. I colon less than two equals C. Wow. It's figuring things out. Now, cash is just a uh, semicolon and colon, and then that's a Q equals C. And then using uppercase, probably wouldn't matter, but why not? Go sub normal. Okay. Then what? V tab two. Vertical tabs. Okay. It's the second line of the screen. And H tab twenty eight in Chinese. <laughs> okay. And uh oh, kids, don't read this. Guns. Okay, space quote semicolon G, which got lost in translation from Chinese. Okay, V tab three. Print debt. Yeah, print your month. Print your way out of debt. That's how we do it here in America. No comment. This is a game show, <laughs> not a politics show. Okay, Q equals D. Go sub. G zero sub? No, I go sub. 1330, I V tab three. That's a colon. H tab 26. And I print. So, yeah, I mean, overall, this cut and paste is helping me because I don't have to type every character. I just edit. All right, hold semicolon colon Q equals SH. Go sub 1330. Okay, then we V tab four inverse print goods aboard ship. Okay, so I got the spaces wrong here because they didn't copy. Now, how do you determine how many spaces you have to read? All right. They didn't put remarks in, so it's goods with some space aboard ship. Hong Kong go down. Hong Kong 
and go down Moses way down to Egypt land yep that's me crazy Eric all right player will often find apple soft okay under 1 billion is normal but over its scientific notation yeah that's fun 1e e plus 09 oh we need a big number subroutine numbers may get long too long so we've got a big number subroutine but i don't know how many see if i figure out goods uh, the tabbing I could guess at how many. Do they talk about line 141? No, they give you more code. Looking back at 140. All right, so this we're going to have to clean up when we see it on the screen. All right, let's just get these few lines in here. I'm going to save my TP. Yes, yeah, save TP. It's COVID. All right. 140 and 141. Mm hmm. Okay, 130, 150. Okay, we could do 140. Ta da! Uh, we got curly quotes. I'm sure there are settings in text edit or any other. Maybe if I did Mac Vim. <laughs> All right, control shift V. Yeah. Okay. We got something. Oh, look at this. See that? Yeah. See when it lines up almost. That's 40 columns. Uh, we'll figure it out later. Goods aboard ship Hong Kong go down. Stop it. All right. Normal. Big number. I think we'll save that for another time. It's 719. Let's save. Save me. And then I'll put it on GitHub if anyone wants a play with it. Ah, how beautiful the code is. Now what's the, what happened here? Okay, my curlies are on line four at 140. Let's fix that. Okay, sometimes there's a, a control character or something. Now this one I'm going to need a 3333. Boy, let's try it in 80 column mode. Just to show you that you'd have to do uh, poke 3373 to list the, uh, just wanted 140, but there it is. Okay, so we're going to edit 140. Print cache. That's how easy it is to print cache with an Apple II. Yeah, run uh, Charles's Bitcoin uh, there you go. G0 sub. <laughs> Normal. V tab 2. H tab 28. Guns. Oh no. Semi G. Debt. Semi Q equals D. Go sub. V tab. H tab. Hold. Semi Q equals SH. Go sub 1330. All right. <laughs> Save. Okay. So now I could reboot the disk and run it just by typing a number two. A game in context. Aiden Book Co. Okay, that's your sport. And you have your undefined statement because there's no 50, but you could list the whole thing now and play with it. Read the book, type it all in yourself if you want. Okay, so that's a disk image. Now, Micromate 
stores disk images on your profile. Oh boy, where is it? Uh, it is in my uh, go home. And there should be a micromate folder. Yeah, here it is, micromate. And uh, my disks. Okay, but no, I've just put this one on my desktop. Yeah, you can put things in your disks. Um, I just have it on my desktop, taipanbook.disk. Okay, so let's go to GitHub. Yeah, no, I want to go to Firefox. Hide, 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 Firefox. Quack. Okay, let's put it in here. Uh, disk images for Kansas Fest 2021. Mm -hmm. Fun stuff. Um, this GS preboot's no longer needed because um, Cucumba fixed it. Found a zero page address that wasn't being set and he fixed that. And I want to drag my um, desktop file here. Can I? No, I can't drag and drop. I have to do um, add file, create new upload file, <clears throat> and then I could drag my disk image. So GitHub is now easy. Okay, and then you do a commit. So you're telling what you added. So I say um, added uh, code, the disk image with code from the Taipan book, uh, Hayden. Let's see, I could yeah, be nice and tell people what this is. Taipan, a historical adventure. And it is on archive.org. And let's see, how do you find it? Mm hmm. Ipan, the historical adventure. And there it is. I'm going to put this in the comment on GitHub. The Apple II. So anyone could find it. And where's my GitHub? Here. Beautiful. Commit directly. Yeah, I could make a new branch, but this only me editing this, so I don't share my code. People can steal my code, but I don't share well. No. All right, so this is for KFest 21. Feel free to explore it. And explore the code and have a good night. Okay, let's go to OBS and end this thing. Uh, outro.